All right, folks, I'm Tom Downey. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage. We will move now to some live Q&A here. Hashtag Cowboys if you want to be featured on the show. Andy says, undrafted free agents. We, we can't do that on the simulator yet. We don't have the undrafted free agent capability. I'll mention some names based on the Cowboys, you know, pre-draft visits. How about Chris Westry? Cornerback out of Kentucky could be a perfect fit there for the Cowboys on that front. From Rife K, what do you think about the reports to the Eagles will go 11-5? and five? Don't listen to preseason projections. Like, who cares? It's not even a report, it's a guess. That's what that is. It's, it's not a report because no one knows what's going to happen. Sure, they can go 11-5. and five. They go 5-11. and 11. I'm not worried about that at all in terms of projections, what media thinks is going to happen to the Eagles in week one. Lynx Remix, what running backs will be their pick 90? Well, we, we did that one. We just did our draft simulation. I'm not sure I could see Damon Harris being there. I could, sh I could see David Montgomery. I think Justice Hill will be there. Other backs like a Mike Weber will, will for sure be there. So there will be players at pick 90. I just don't know who they're actually going to end up being. Dexter Green says, what about defense tackle? Well, we did fill the need with Gerald Willis. I think they're looking for one guy. I don't know if they're going to go with two. One guy I think is what they end up going there, and I think based on the Cowboys' draft history, it's going to be a guy that can collapse the pocket and bring you pass rush ability. Now, Salad, or is it Salad Jr., says he would like Tristan Hill at number 90, a solid defense tackle. That also makes sense. I think that he and Willis, pretty much interchangeable there for the Cowboys' draft picks at number 90 overall. Now, there were some coaching issues there for Tristan Hill, but when he was on the field, look, he was UCF's best player. So that makes some sense for the Cowboys at number 90. Con Crank, one, two, three, any kickers? Uh, I didn't include kickers in the draft simulation. I mean, you, you could do it. I don't know, the LSU kid, Cole Tracy, perhaps. But if you're the Cowboys, just sign someone as an undrafted free agent. That makes the most sense for the Cowboys because why draft one that might not make the roster. I know it's it's seven pick and it's a flyer anyway, but you don't need to go kicker very early for the Cowboys. Tyler Hill says Darnell Savage, Justice Hill, round two, round three. Trade next year's picks for round one this year to get DK Metcalf or Noah Fan. Look, I like Noah Fan. I like DK Metcalf. But if you're trading next year's picks to get a first this year, and by the way, it's probably going to be top 20 at least, I mean, that's next year's first, next year's second, and next year's third. I, I don't want to commit that amount to get a top 20 pick. That's too much for one player for me right now. So, Savage in round two, sure, sign me up. Moving up for DK Metcalf or Noah Fant, that's going to be too pricey if you're not even including your own second round selection. All right, from Mitchell, what do you think about the Cowboys' schedule? I, I, A, make sure you're subscribed, youtube.com slash uh, Dallas Cowboys Report, because guess what? We posted the schedule video earlier this morning. I think 10 wins is the over-under. I'm very surprised there are no back-to-back first-round picks. Kind of funny how that turned out there for the Dallas Cowboys. Back-to-back -back home games. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. Thanks, producer Brett. That was bad. All right, William Pete. Will safety be the pick at number 58 in your opinion? If I have to guess... Yes, I think that 58 will go safety route for the Cowboys. That makes the most sense to me. It fills the biggest need, and it's the best value in the end for the Cowboys in terms of finding an instant impact player. So other options for sure, but if I'm picking just one, I'm picking safety. Alfredo Rodriguez, will the Cowboys take Taylor Rapp at 58 and Jay Sternberger at 90? If they're there, I could definitely see that being the case. Now, both would require a slide, but that does fit for the Cowboys. I think that those are two, maybe maybe not full-on dream targets, but kind of bordering on the dream target side of things. Robert Olmstead says, give Dak Prescott six years, 200 million, the 100 million guaranteed. Here's the good news. I don't think you have to go that high. I don't think the Cowboys need to offer Dak Prescott $33 million. I think you can get him at a much more reasonable, let's say, 185 for six years. That's still on the high side there. So for the Cowboys, that's a lot of money. I don't think he has to go that high. 
Preston wants to know what round did Lil Jordan Humphrey get drafted? I, I still have a pulled up, so let me go see if I can find him real fast. Oh, I don't know if I did as pretty as Mitchell spills it spills the beer for me. Uh, okay, that's a command F here. Hold on, guys. Oh, oh, funny story. Humphrey went off the board two picks before the Cowboys at the at the end of round seven. This is my Shiner Bach, by the way. Love that beer. Shiner, if, if you're listening, let's get the. Uh, Hook up here on the, on the Cowboys report. All right, anyway, back to the questions. Jamie, Barry, Sue, or McCoy, are they still an option? Uh, technically, yes. In reality, probably not. Barry's got all kinds of medical issues there. And Dominican Sue, I think, might want too much money. And Gerald McCoy is, for now, on the Bucks. <laughs> Doing country stuff and then some. Is there any Iowa player that you like outside of the top Iowa players? Um, define the top Iowa players. Because, I mean, you, you have Noah Fant. What was that, Producer Brett? Oh, he's, oh those guys? Uh, Abani Hooker, then. I like him as a round three target. And then an undrafted free agent? I wouldn't mind trying Nick Eastley, the other receiver from Iowa. So those are the two guys that come to mind for me beyond those top-tier prospects. Eric Morton. Do you think Ad and Hurd's not going to play back? No, no, no. He's not playing halfback anymore. I won't even read through the rest of it. He's not going to play running back in the NFL. He's going to be a big slot receiver. Now, you could get creative with him at times, but you're not going to go light at running back because you have Jalen Hurd, too. If anything, you go light because you also have Taylor Austin, who I think would be a better fit as a running back for the Cowboys. R.J. Muncie. What are the Cowboys' thoughts, chances of getting a kicker from anywhere? Maher did go, but he was not Dan Bailey when Dan was going ham. So I appreciate the parentheses addition there because Brett Maher was better than Dan Bailey this year. But you're right. Prime Maher, or Maher was not as prime Dan Bailey. So I think what you see the Cowboys do is I think they will target somebody as an undrafted free agent. You can find somebody and bring in some competition. There's no downside to that, right? Just bring in somebody. Cole Tracy is the one that comes to mind for me. The Utah kicker, too. Matt Gay is an option. Options there for the Cowboys as an undrafted free agent. Manny Ramon, any backup quarterback prospects? It's a pretty poor class for quarterbacks. Uh, so I think it's going to kind of dry everybody up and inflate their value. So maybe Brett ripping out of Boise State. I think Ryan Flynn might go too early. I don't know where Jared Sidman ends up going. So my guess is no, but if someone like Brett Rippon falls a little bit, maybe like round five or round seven. From Tarius Moss, do the Cowboys still take a 30-visit guy? Yes or no? Yes. Cowboys' last 15 first-round picks, all but one of them has been a top 30 visit. By the way, oftentimes they take other guys in the middle rounds that were top 30 visits. So the Cowboys use those visits as guys they like in particular and want to get more information on them. So big time yes there for the Cowboys. Joshua Parker, what would you rate the fan-led mock draft? I like what you guys did. Again, we'll, we'll bring it back up here for you. Juan Thornhill, love that pick. Gerald Willis, love that pick. Damon Harris, fantastic pick there. I like Foster Moreau. Round five, round seven, you can't complain about those types of picks there. I give it an A. Good job, guys. We'll pull this on as a separate cut, by the way. I am very curious how those who weren't involved in the live mock draft, how they how they react. So grade yourselves, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you guys think there in the comment section. I am sure we'll all disagree because that's one very thing, one very common thing there for the Cowboys and fans and everything. We never quite agree. I gave it an A. I think that makes some sense. Thurman Wells, why not Alec Ingold and let Olawali go? You kind of blew your shot there. You could have done that earlier. If you wanted to take a fullback, Al can go out of Wisconsin, you shouldn't have re-signed all the Wally. So kind of too late for that one, but I do get where you're coming from. Maybe you just signed as an undrafted free agent. Anyway, not too sure there. Jose Raul Mendoza, or Mendoza Acosta. Almost got that right, damn it. Could the Cowboys trade for Noah Fant? So they have the title of the future and the present. Here's the problem. To get Noah Fant, you probably got to get into the top 20. Let's just say 21 for the, with the Seattle Seahawks, for example. So at that point, it's going to be your first round pick next year, a second round pick this year, and either your second next year or your third this year. So you're giving up this year's draft and next year's draft for one player. I love Noah Fant, 
I don't know if that's the best route to go. Now, if he slides out of round one or into like 31, maybe you start to change your mind. But to really get Noah Fant, you're going to have to give up next year's first round pick, and the Cowboys don't want to do that. From, from Raphael, what do you think about O'Shane Zimenez at number 90? I, I think that's about the right range for him. Uh, he's a bit of a tweener for me in terms of the role I think he's going to play. But he does fit very well across to Marcus Lawrence. So if he's there at 90, I would consider it. But I don't know if the Cowboys are quite as high. Typically, the Cowboys like guys with long arms, and that's just in general. Zimenez doesn't quite fit that long and linky mold like an Anthony Nelson or even a John Kaminsky out of Charleston does. Targus Moss, Tristan Hill or Jared Willis at pick 90? I don't know if there's a wrong answer. I think they're, they're both very good. I think they're both quality players with some red flags. Hill had some coachability issues this year. Willis had some maturity issues earlier. So I think from the Cowboys' perspective, both make sense. Maybe you try and play you know, the luck game and see if one falls to you in round four. I think there's a possibility of that as well. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.